Good morning from New Zealand. Yes, it's Julie Sock back once again. I've got a very special show for you today. But just a few hints. Check out spiritualistonline.com and check out our YouTube channel. Check out Sock Radio on Facebook. It's got all the links. We have now got nearly 20, 30 new shows all listed in the encores. All the shows that we've been playing the last month or so are now live on YouTube for you to listen to if you missed them. And this one will be as well for you in the next few days. Of course, we've got Spirit Weavers with Jody, Brand new show, show does, joined us last week. Uh, we have got Sounds Like Spirit with Kim Melhopt who's been going with us for a couple of months now and her shows are getting more and more popular. We've got It's Spiritual Insights with Jenny Lee, brand new show joined last week. And wow, did she well and truly knock it into the ballpark. It was brilliant. We've got uh, Beyond the Veil, of course, once a month with Terry Oz, who brings you messages from Beyond the Veil. And of course, we've got the lovely Christina Richter, with the ast astrological show at the end of each month and that'll be coming up in, uh, next week. We've got the brand new show The Circle of Mediums which well and truly hit the point last week. Absolutely amazing. I've got to say thanks to all our co-hosts on that show and of course coming up next week we have got the um, liveliest <laughs> interactive talk show online the Spiritualist Open Circle Panel Forum Show. Now that one, you've got to watch it. You've got to be in there. It's um, one chairperson, <laughs> two special guests, six, uh, sorry, three. I'll say that again. It's one chairperson, two co-hosts, three special guests, and four panelists every hour over three hours. And we're talking about everything that brings in spirit mediumship healing and keeping it real with spirit so that's your roundup it's been one beautiful month on sock radio we're coming up of course to the christmas christmas time and it's going to be really hard getting all these people online when they uh, have got christmas parties and new year parties and things going off but we will do our best please do excuse us if a few shows are postponed till next week uh, next month but we'll do our best to bring them to you we are also looking very early in the new year to bring Sock Radio to you back 24-7. So you will be listening to all sorts of music. We're also looking at bringing in some alternative shows, not just spiritual ones. So um, I am talking to quite a few people with some surprises coming in. Okay, let's get to it. It's Julie Sock with Spirit Talks, and today I've got a very special guest, uh, a fellow Brit. <laughs> Probably won't like talking to that because you'll hear his accent very shortly, um, <laughs> and it's very specific. So if you need either of us to slow down, just say so. <laughs> I want to bring into you today my very special guest, and I'm so pleased to get him on the show, Mr. Stephen Trolland. How you doing, mate? I'm all right. Yourself? I'm all right. Yourself? Accent give it away. <laughs> <laughs> that slightly gives it away, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to, Stephen? I haven't talked to you for ages, and then all of a sudden we caught up and said, "Right, let's get a show going." Oh, just busy. Um, uh, busy with my. I've got my day job. Um, Obviously, I'm, I'm getting ready to go away to France because I teach snowboarding across there uh, during the winters, um, uh, doing private readings, uh, doing platform work, working around the churches, but always, always um, developing and leaving time for unfoldment. That's my uh -huh. passion. Well, I've heard of the Psychic Cop and um, we've, had all, <laughs> we've had all different titles to put a new bent on being psychic or mediums but the the snowboarding medium come on <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be fun I, i'll see you on the slopes in the meantime i just want to let you know i've got your granny with you <laughs> there is actually a there was actually a two-page spread on the spirit and destiny magazine that was a few years ago right enough and it said the psychic snowboarder it was quite quite funny 
That's gonna you be see brilliant. That? <laughs> it's gonna be brilliant. I can just imagine you going down the slopes and doing your snowball snowboarding and trying to get a message. Do you ever get spirit with you on the slopes? Um only on no it's more my um my own spirit not uh, i don't um open up to the to the spirit world uh, the discarnate world really when i'm when i'm working my work is work and that, that that's uh -huh. it but when i get my own time in my own space i always take the time i like um a lot of people like at lunch times so i'll go and sit with their mates and stuff like that I'm, I'm i'm a bit of a hermit i like to go and sit by myself and stick my headphones on and just just spend time with my own soul you know and uh -huh. uh, i listen to listen to a lot of um lectures like from Gordon Higginson and, and great mediums like that so I, yeah. I'm always always trying to keep open and develop and whatnot and learning yeah I've yeah. got to say Gordon was a Gordon oh he's a cracker uh, absolutely <laughs> amazing <laughs> absolutely yeah I, I I've got to say I wish I hadn't gotten the chance to meet him but I mean you've done work at the Arthur Fidley College haven't you and you've trained there yeah, I've, I've done uh, done a lot of training there, and and even the the amazing mediums like Mav Mavis Patilla, uh, Eileen Davies, uh, my friend Len Loban actually he's in the spirit world now. Glenn Edwards, there's so many people. Uh, Paul Jacob that have been underneath the wing of Gordon, and they can't they can't put enough emphasis on what's such a brilliant man. That people talk about he's a brilliant medium, but I think it takes a brilliant man to make a, med a brilliant medium as well. And, yeah. Just talk about him all the time. Yeah, I've got to say, he was. Yeah, he it, it was. Uh, he was. A, he was an all rounder. He wasn't yeah. one specific field of working, and his physical mediumship, as well as his training, That's and the right. way he taught. The way he taught was so natural. Um, and yeah, like I say, I wish I'd get a chance to meet him. So um, let's introduce you to everybody in <laughs> spiritualistonline.com. Um, how long have you been working with Spirit? Um, well, all my life, really. I think um, there's a part of us that's really needing to be awakened at some point, and sometimes it takes a difficult time or whatever to go through that. And um, sadly enough, my, my brother passed away about uh, 11 years now, 11, 12 years now. And then um, from then, things started happening naturally uh, so I just wanted to investigate it and find out more uh, and then from that I just started uh, started um, consciously unfolding my mediumship and realized that then um, like past experiences wasn't just my imagination so consciously unfolding for about 10 11 years now it's always the case, isn't it, where, um, well not always, but it's often the case that a, a loss like that will bring you closer yeah. to the spirit realm, will open you up. Um, and whether it's you're actually searching for something to believe in or to get rid of those beliefs that tell you, well, if this happens, why is there a God? Or what does it, does religion yeah. mean anything? That brings out yeah. the search for an awareness that makes sense to yeah. you. The thing, the thing I really love about the spiritualist movement is to embrace the truth of the spirit. So to me, uh, personally, and, and I'd say that probably for all, all mediums and, and people that have really been touched by the spirit, uh, it doesn't become a belief, it becomes a knowing. And a way of life. It's not just the Yeah, it's exactly. Not just the, yeah. It, it's, it's something that's part of your everyday life. Yeah, yeah. So mm. when did you start? Where where did you start training? Was that up in um, in, um, in Scotland? The, in Scotland, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I never heard of spirit, um, spiritualist churches in my life, and um, just through um, a few like a few events and people that I bumped into, just kind of led me to to a spiritualist church. And then from there, uh, as soon as I arrived there, I'm just so interested in it. Um, I got invited into the circle. And then the, the circle the leader there um, mentioned the Arthur Finlay College, and then so I looked up the Arthur Finlay College, and hey voila, there it was. That's it started there. The first courses with Tony Stockwell, uh, embrace the spirit. It was called um, about ten years ago. Yeah, another another good medium, Tony. I've got to say he has worked with about all the greats, and you mentioned Mavis, Mavis Patilla. 
Um, yeah. Uh, we have tried to contact um, uh, Mavis and we've arranged sessions and every time something's happened when she's been either over here and uh, down here in Australia um, and when she's back in the UK she's so busy etc but um, yeah Tony what a choice it must be to work with him oh he's just well Mavis as well I mean, both of them um, the love of the spirit that they have you know um, it's just the, there's a, a great medium, um, uh, Lynn Probert, uh, she's worked alongside Tony quite a lot and she talks about so passion is power, we talk about being in the power of the spirit and to me like both of them, all of them like, really show that passion uh -huh. and I think that's and how, um, I think, you know everyone's unique in their own way and how they yeah. um, how they develop and how they are within as a person and within the mediumship, but I think they just just live and breathe it. You know, it's just yeah, so lucky to be in, in touch with, with with such nice people as well. Yeah, I mean, your passion alone to take it not only to your local area, but to go training down in London and to take it abroad. I mean, working abroad, doing your um, work abroad. Um, how do you find the difference between Britain and elsewhere? When it comes to working with spirit, um, well, I've only done a little bit uh, in France, um, where I work uh, as a snowboard instructor. It's mostly just been between friends when I've been across there. It's, it's a different, um, complete mindset altogether. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I have been invited to go to Holland, um, maybe next year. Um, we'll, we'll see how that how that comes up. But even just going to I mean, if you look at the Arthur Finley College, for instance, in places like that, it's like an international place by itself. You get so exactly. many different um, types of people that come from there and, and different walks of life. Uh, and, and I think that in itself um, it kind of opens you up to the world in some kind of sense. And, uh -huh. and, and, and even dealing with so many different types of, of walks of life, um, that helps expand your mediumship as yeah. well to... Because, um, because quite a lot, as as you know, it's it works through the the life experience of a medium. That's what will come easy to a medium, as yes. as it start to unfold. And it, and it's and a big part of a development is getting beyond that part, is getting out that frame of reference, and going to places like that where it's so international and so many different walks of life really helps that. And yeah, I I'll just embrace any any moment to to, to work with uh, people uh, abroad and whatnot. So because I know it'll help my mediumship. Yeah, I know what it was like when I came to uh, when I first came out to New Zealand. Um, uh -huh. um, you know, okay, there's a lot of Brits over here. I was here six months before I met another Kiwi other than my partner. You know, but um, uh -huh. I, I tell a lie. I met my best mate, who's I've got to say um, the music before the show there, Pretty Woman, was played in memory of Please. my best mate, Jen. Um, uh -huh. And she was one of the first ones that I gave a reading to. And I remember trying to pronounce place names from, from here in New Zealand. And I just, <laughs> I, I put it this way, I'm glad she was familiar with them because what I couldn't pronounce, she could tell me what they were, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I got to working with the Maori and I got working with other people and Asian people. And because uh, New wow. Zealand is a very multicultural, multicultural place, you know. Uh -huh. um, oh. And, but yeah, trying to work, pronounce some of the names over here and the usual fear of thinking, well, I've come away from my own hometown and all the usual churches I used to go to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it going to work for me somewhere else? Well, it just, yeah, they just never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it works wherever you go. It may be a cultural change and you may get some different accents in than that. But the, the yeah. weird thing with spirit, and it's like the old question, um, how can you talk to a Chinese person in spirit and still understand them? But the language of spirit is international. Um, you know, <laughs> so it's <laughs> it works for some reason. It just it's works. True. And it's a, yeah. it's a language of, of 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 thought as well, isn't it? It's not like a it's not like a converse. It's, you, you know yourself. It's a conversation of minds. That don't. It's not like my you hearing my voice just now. Although we might perceive it in that sense. Yeah, at I times, actually do. I actually a, hear their voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, half the time that's half an hour. How I know how that who's talking, 
Because, you know, when, yeah, you, when, you, when you're out on the bus <laughs> or you're in the supermarket and you've got this voice talking to you and there's nobody around sat there talking to you, it, I just know it's spirit because it's not my voice, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh, but uh -huh. you're right. Um, I'm not sure it would work for me in France because I never got through the French language in school. Never mind trying to understand. <laughs> I couldn't I'm just as bad. <laughs> I couldn't understand how they got, you know, if we say we're going, for, we're going to the park for a walk, he would, the, the French say we're going to the park for a walk. We're going walking in the park. It, it, they turn it all around. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It comes back to. Yeah, I know what you thinking, mean. How does that work? You know. <laughs> I, I remember. I remember listening to Colin Fry um, and and in one of his um, in radio interviews, um, and um, he was talking about well, obviously, obviously the the because it's a language of thought, conversation of minds, and he was talking about well a medium that he was watching. And um, he kept seeing, uh, he says, like, razor blades above this guy's head that he was with. And he didn't feel as if, like, he was, like, as if he was going to do anything silly or any kind of thing uh -huh. like that. And so he just put it across to him and says, can you understand why I'm seeing uh, razor blades above your head? And he went, yes, mister. And he said, my, my second name is Gillette. Because <laughs> you get the razor blades legit, you know? So it come, it's just, I think it's how we perceive it as well. But intelligent. Oh, how can you get past that one? <laughs> mm. It's amazing that that's the kind of thing we see. With the, yeah. We see the was, symbols that, was a, that, that, come. Was, that was to a friend. That was to a French person as well. So yeah. yeah. How I mean the the way the the symbols come through to explain the messages and yeah, to help with yeah. the interpretation. You get some of the silliest through, things through. You know. Um, and um, for me, the confirmation with spirit is not just about that medium, that message in the moment, but the fact that it continues through your life. I mean, um, when I first started going to church way back, a few years back now, um, i put it this way, my son's now 30 and he was still in his prom when I first started going. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> and oh. um, this medium was on this evening and me and my mate went, and the medium finally came and she not only said right i'm looking for a julie now you could say that she saw me crimp in the corner and go oh god not me please <laughs> um but then she searched around the whole room and she's going okay it's something to do with germany german and i'm thinking right it's not me that's okay i've never been out of england you know i have oh, never left durham oh. then you know but um <laughs> She's going around the whole room and she's going, no, it's not Germany, it's not, it's, that's, that's the country, that's not what I'm looking for. And then she's looking and she's talking away to herself on the stage, you know. <laughs> she came and she looked me straight in the air, she says, you're Julie German, aren't you? And it never even dawned on me no my married way. name was Julie that's German. That's amazing. Excellent. Didn't even dawn on me. Yeah. And it says, I said, uh, yeah, uh, pull that name out of a hat, you know. Um, and she says it's First not Jermaine. That's brilliant. She she even specified. She says it's not Jermaine with I E I A in the middle or an E at the end. It is uh -huh. German, as in the country. And I went, well, yes, it is. She, <laughs> um, even the spelling she, of it. Go yeah, she told me um, then that I would go back to college. Well, I had an eighteen-month-old kid. You know, I was a single lady just out of a divorce. I said, "There's no bloody way I'm going back to college." Uh, Over the next five years, I went back four times. <laughs> Brilliant. So the messages you get from a spirit, like I say, can lead on to other things, and they, you, you keep getting the confirmation. And I love that when you get feedback years later from a message. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't remember them. You know, somebody will come to me and say, Yeah, I saw you in 2003 and you gave me this message and you told me this and you told me that and you told me that. I'll say, did I? Uh, right, okay. But some, yeah. key, some key within the message, something will spark a memory. Oh, right, I'm with you now. And I have yeah, to go yeah. back and ask them all over again and say, what, what did I tell this lady, you know? But they give you the yeah. confirmation years later. And that's what Colin did. Colin uh -huh. Fry um, yeah. came to New Zealand with, um, oh, I forgot her name now. She used to work with them a lot on tour. Um, oh, um, and Tracy Higgs? Yes. T.J. Yes. Higgs? T.J., yeah. yes. Um, yeah. I went to see them in the cargo. 
and he did his first stint and all this, you know, and then he brought TJ uh -huh. out. And the first thing she said is, hold on now, I've got to see who this woman is. She's been following us since we got on the plane in England. And uh -huh. we've gone right through the country. This is the last stop. We've got to find out who she is. So she started rattling off all this information. And I went, oh, God, it's me granny. <laughs> <laughs> me granny get on the plane with them in England and pestered them through the whole tour, right? Uh -huh. And TJ ended up giving me a message and Colin joined in, right? And to this day, there's still things about that message that still make sense to me. And now Colin's with them in spirit. You know, I, I just hope my granny's not pestering him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, that was, um, I mean, you were talking about Colin Fry there and talking about things that happen um, afterwards too. I remember Colin also listening, because I listened to a lot of stuff um, uh, on like their interviews and things, because I'm always trying to fill myself with the knowledge. And, um, so it was another interview uh, with Colin there, and that he, he was talking about that he went to see Doris Stokes, and um, somehow, you know, went he went he managed to uh, go towards our um, the room where they get changed and things like that before they go on stage, uh -huh. and this is he was just he was walking in there, um, she just looked at him she, she, and she said, now you've got voices coming out from all around your head and you're going to travel and you're going to go to this place and that place and this place and this place and this place and in the way she named them, it wasn't until later on that Colin actually realised that she named every place in order to where he went, all the different uh -huh. countries to where he went and obviously all the voices that came around him, uh, he was a physical medium as well and then yeah. um, direct voice medium too, so it's just, just amazing. Yeah, I'm really jealous Stokes. Um, I grew up with my mum reading Doris Stokes, Doris Stokes books. Um, I, call her one, I call her one of my mentors. I never met her in life, but I have in spirit. I've got to say that one. Oh, um, you're really lucky. Come through in spirit, and um, it's, it's it was amazing at the time. Uh, we've got a question for you in the chat room from Tracy. She's asking, Stephen, do you find symbols are sometimes hard to interpret? Um, yes. For, for myself as well, I think, I think it becomes a personal experience mm -hmm. and it becomes, to, to me, um, it's how we perceive the mediumship as well. If you look at the, um, as we talked about, the, the Gillette, as we mentioned a minute ago about the razor blades above the guy's head, I mean, uh, my pictures, I've had, sometimes, I try, try to explain it this way, um, sometimes you can get pictures in the form of clairvoyance, where you actually it's, it's pure clairvoyance if you look at it that way. But sometimes uh, for me, because everyone's different as well, I'm quite clairsentient, and f yeah. it's from the clairsentience is then what creates the pictures. So if I would say if there's anything that could help her, is to sit uh, in the presence of the spirit during meditations and just sit for the presence of the spirit, and because that. It's through the feeling um, that comes with the picture that will then tell what the picture is yes. saying. If you understand that, yes, the clear it's sentient like the old thing, part. Seeing a red heart, you always feel love. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, some will see yeah. a hammer, and you see anger, or you or you see work. Yeah. You feel you know. So yeah. it, it's also so it's, like you, that's right. It's about the the feeling and the the familiar yeah. familiarity with with the yeah. image that it's comes through. Uh, if, if, I think if um, if we're finding it hard to interpret it, to me that sometimes tells that the, the conscious mind is coming in because it's always trying to rationalise and it, and it kind of can it can Good interrupt point. it. So that's that's where the difficulty will come in. But yeah. if if it's really coming from the soul, that 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 well, soul is another name for psychic as well, and it's the spirit oh. world uses that sense sen uh, senses to to um to um to merge with and uh, get their information across. Yeah. So even Mavis, even Mavis, Mavis Patilla says that the, the clear sentience is the anchor uh, within the mediumship. Uh, it's from the feelings is what will tell what the picture is saying. Yeah, that's so <laughs> true. I also find the ones that are totally blank to me, um, and it's how I explain when I start working with a client. I will get images, words, songs, that kind of thing that will help me interpret the message. And if they mean something to me, like, you know, the common thing, the, the bell for the wedding or the, the ring for the, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, the engagement or whatever, 
Um, those I can usually interpret, no problem. Songs, if I know them, brilliant. If I don't, I'll come to you and say, what does this song title mean to you? Because I don't know it. And it means something specific only to the sitter. Um, as um, yeah, sometimes parts of the message, well, the message is not for us to understand it anyway. It's for exactly. the sitter to understand. Exactly. And if the, if the White Cliffs of Dover means something to them, and yet all I know it is uh, it's an old um, wartime song. It's no good me saying, have you got somebody linked into the wartime? Because I'm hearing the, the White Cliffs of Dover. They'll say, yeah. well, no, I've got no nothing to do with the wartime. But they'll say, uh -huh. but it was my granny's favorite song. Then that's what uh -huh. it means to them. So uh -huh. I always go, first I'll give Just... you what it means to me or what spirit are trying to explain to me. If it doesn't mean that, then let me. Then I ask, well, what does it mean to you? And half the time I say, well, exactly. I should come to that in the first place because it's your message, you know. That's exactly. I've got a, a good friend, as I talked about, uh, Len Loban before. He always says, give what you get. And yes. I was saying, if you, haven't got the, if you haven't got the feeling behind it, um, then we got, I would say, pass it over to the person, see if they understand that. And if they don't understand that, then I would just sit for that little minute just to get yourself back into that space and then see what comes comes yeah. after that. I, I had a yeah. friend um, that, um, if we talk about giving what you get, um, he told us the, the story when he was when he was developing it. Len Loban was his mentor at the time as well. And um, he, he came to this lady and he says, I know I've got a gentleman in the spirit and it feels like, you see, it feels like your brother. But he sh what he showed me, I don't understand because he's showed me an HP bottle, uh, uh, like a um, brown sauce <laughs> bottle above your head. Do you understand that? And the next minute she was in tears and crying and emotion and whatnot. Because they had the conversation, they told us later that they had the conversation before he went to the spirit world because he had so much... Uh, brown sauce with food and everything like that. They had that joke says, I tell you what, if you come back in an hour life, you're going to come back as a brown sauce bottle. <laughs> and that's exactly what that what he, what he, the, he managed to present her. So that how how perfect is that? Uh-huh, that's spot on. And, uh, that's freaky because <laughs> as soon as you mentioned the HP, my mum comes to mind because <laughs> that was her favourite as well. She always had to have some brown sauce. No tomato right. sauce, nothing else. She would have some mint sauce you know, but it was brown sauce with my, with my mom, so I know exactly how that sister felt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where are you working? Where can people find you? I mean, I was going to go to a break. It's half past the hour, but I'm enjoying this conversation. We've only got 20 minutes or so left with you, but yeah, I, I want to keep it talking. Let's just keep talking. Yeah, no where is it? Where is it people can find you? Um, and I mean, you're on Facebook, etc. Where yeah, can people yeah. find you? Have you got any events coming up that people can join in? Um, well, I'm on, as I said, I'm in the middle of the, getting a, a website built uh, just now. Uh, I think the best place just now is Facebook. Um, I will be doing um, advertising well, in between my times back and forward from France, maybe doing some Skype settings and things. So I think, well, I'm not the best in computers, so I've got to be honest and say I've just been to I've just been to a social media course to try and help me learn about Facebook. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite dyslexic as well. So uh, it's going to take me a little bit of time, but they can find us on there, and it's um uh, it's simply Spirit Connections um, uh -huh. on Facebook, and they'll find that, or they can put in Stevie and Trisha, uh, um, uh, uh, simply Spirit, and they'll, they'll yeah. find us on there and they're welcome to send any messages or anything like that and if yeah. I can help them uh, I, um, I will. Are you, are you doing any churches in Scotland at the moment? Yeah, yeah, well, well we're part of the committee in Inverness uh, Spiritualist Church um, it's the furthest one north uh, in the Highlands um, we're on the circle there as well, I help with the development circle there too uh, where the last place I was was Perth in Scotland, um, it's about it's about an hour and a half drive from from here. So it's quite rural where I am when it comes to spiritualist churches. So I really got to kind of travel and drive uh, yeah. to, to places. Um, uh, so, but I don't mind that. Um, we I've did, got to uh, say the Scots. The Scots are very spiritual. The history with spiritual um, connections with the Scots goes right back to the clans, doesn't it? Yeah, even uh, Gordon Higginson uh, said um, when he came up to Scotland, it's really such a place where he can find himself when he needed time and space to, because obviously 
even such a great medium is a person also and also some people go through difficult times you know so I, I, I got told that in Scotland there's a place where he really managed to find himself here as well I think uh-huh. he actually opened up Inverness Spiritualist Church as well I got told from my, my friend Len Loban he was a friend of his uh-huh. um, he opened up the church where, where I'm on the committee just now uh, How do you find yeah. that working with the committee? Is that a SNU church? It is an SNU church. Yeah. How do you um, find working with committees? Um, well, it's, it's my first uh, committee that I've been on, <laughs> but I've been there. <laughs> for, I've been in that church since, oh, let's say, ten years now, uh-huh. and it's been changed hands along the way as well. But everyone there is so nice. Yeah. Uh, the president, the president of the church, she, um, she, she just all everyone's just really brilliant. Everyone's just so nice to each other. Yeah. Um, one thing we all I make decisions about, together, and yeah. yeah. There's one thing I found about uh, churches is they're open maybe on the Sunday for the divine service. You're lucky if it's a Friday for a special or an open circle, and maybe it's a Tuesday for the healing. Um, for me, the churches should be open like all churches, 24/7. You know, I know we can't always man them. But I really That's do exactly miss being, yeah. you know, not being able to go to a church any day of the week and even yeah. just sit, you know. Um, yeah. That's one of the things that got me about the churches is, uh, is that they're only open at certain times, you know. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I, I quite agree. I mean, I, I would love somewhere to... There, there is many places where, uh, more down in England, where there's something on nearly like every, every day of the week kind of thing, near enough. Uh, oh. But up here in, in Scotland, like where we are, we've not, we don't uh, actually own the building or anything like that. It's like we're kind of rent the space in, in, a, yeah. in a nice hall, in a, in a big hall. So I think we, we've got the, the Monday service. Um, and then on a Wednesday, they do the healing service. And then straight after the healing service, we do on the development circles. Uh-huh. Uh, and sometimes we'll get um, like workshops uh, at the weekends and that now and again as well with visiting mediums yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as, as you see, it's just I think finding people to man it. To, yeah, I think that's one thing that spiritual churches need to work towards. Um, not all of them have the development groups, which is a shame. It's part of um, part of the faith and part of the service. Um, but yeah. also being being able to have them have them open twenty four seven, I think, would be amazing. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were talking earlier on, and just before we got started. Um, uh, a common link that we have is working with music um, uh-huh. and the songs that come through. We're both rock and rollers. We both love the old <laughs> music, um, which I found was rather fascinating as I was playing it all before the, before yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how do you, do, do you get a lot of work where, um, a lot of connections via your music? You said you listen to your earphones in your lunch oh, break and that. It's so inspiring about- that can bring it through, isn't it? Oh, there's so so many experiences. I mean, if you know, like um, when we under when we get to understand the world of vibration, if you think you pluck the string of a guitar, it vibrates and makes a sound, yeah. and somehow that will resonate within the auric field of us and can stimulate something within us, uh-huh. where it can help uh, create certain emotions and things like that, and and somehow um, our soul can play part within that, and uh-huh. and. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, I've had so many amazing experiences through music, uh, as my brothers in, in the spirit world, as I said before. And um, uh, one time I was going through a really rough time, and I was driving up the hill uh, toward going to work in France, funny enough. And um, and I've got this, um, uh, what one's it called? Oh, I'm rubbish with names. But anyway, I used to play this song, um, uh, Coldplay it was. Uh, but oh, I used yeah, to one of my, one of my son's favourite. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't let it go past this this this, um, this certain song all the time because it's one I felt that I really that he really liked, you know, and I just never went to go past that. And one morning I just got up and I, I pressed the pressed the play button and says, "This is for you, brother." And as I started driving up the hill, I went to go and press it to change it back, and I thought, "No, nah, I'm going to leave it this time." I never knew what was after it. And the words that came out, um, oh, please excuse my singing, for God's sakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the words that came out was like, hey, brother, I'm trying to talk to you. There's something oh. about the future and I don't know what. And there was just the, that was the, the song. 
um, there was words that came out in the song, but it's not just the words, as we talked about before. The presence of the Spirit is very something that I, I, I really feel passionate about. It's the, the feeling that comes behind it that, that, uh -huh. that tells me that he was, he was having an influence in the words that were, were being spoken. And the certain words that were spoken it built so, brought so much comfort to me. Uh -huh. And it, it's, it's happened um, so many times. There's another one called uh, Brian Adams. Um, um, as again, I'm rubbish. I, I like Brian Adams. Like, you like his rock and roll ones too. But um, uh, when I was working one time, uh, I, I do um, garden maintenance and stuff during the summer as well a little bit. And um, my uh, CD player is on a little timer. So I was just sitting there and I was, I was just listening to the song. It's got to do with like with Brothers, Brothers Under the Sun, I think it's called. Uh -huh. And I was, just, I was just listening to this song and I know it was very much my thoughts. And I was thinking, I was thinking of my brother, you know, and I was thinking, oh, that's really nice. Yeah. And the timer, the timer went off. So that was fine. So I, I went to step step out the van to get out, and it switched itself back on. And then all <laughs> oh, the music and the feeling that came behind the music that comes with it was something. And and if you think when when we talk about certain meditations or certain music and yeah, th there's so many th within that. It's what resonates to me. It re it's what resonates with an individual. Yeah. And what I've what I've learned over time is um. Over time, when we learn to start, to me, I like, instead of going off on a, on a meditation, it's, it's like, uh, I like to sit in the presence and the power of my own soul, because I know there is where I'll meet the spirit world. And when I do that, I've listened to the same playlist, more or less, all the time. So in a sense, I've kind of like trained the subconscious mind. So when I go to sit now, there's a part of me that already knows what to do. I don't have to yeah. sit and really concentrate and it try and go on a journey natural, or yes. anything like that. It, yeah. it just automatically, just slowly, just kind of moves you into that space. And that's, to me, that's something really special about music. Yeah. Um, but you were talking Jody, about the rock uh, and roll. Yeah. <laughs> so on you in go. the chat room asking, um, uh, do you play an instrument and do you think that that would help any medium that's developing, developing with musical messages? I would say yes, because music helps bring comfort. It's um, to me, it's an extension of the soul. Uh, if you can play, and I, I played a little bit the guitar. I, I used to sing a little bit, uh, but not not now. I ended up getting catching pneumonia and things. I find it difficult. But um, um, the, the the how music can move you, and mm -hmm. it's just I, I don't know if you've ever heard of a guy called Mike Rowland. Um, he was uh, a tutor of the art. He was a tutor of the Arthur Finlay College. I was in my early development there. And what he used to do, he used to use the piano and he used to very much use music uh -huh. to, to give readings and stuff. So what he would do is um, if, they was given, if someone's going for a private reading, he would allow himself to move into that place, say it was a spiritual assessment or a psychic one, just, just for instance. Um, he allowed himself to move into that space and then once he was in the power there uh, in the presence of the soul and whatnot, he would start playing the music so he was in the he was tuning in to the that person's soul so really that soul is stimulating something within him to play certain types of music wow. or whatever sound that came out and then he'd stop halfway through uh, the, the time and then from the sound that was played he was able to give a reading from from the like that the high notes could mean something like yeah you had a good time there or, or for instance or the low notes could be I know you went through a bit of a depression here but I know it's starting to get better as the music as the music starts to change you know and he used to give um, um, readings from that and if you think about it when you he gave that that tape to go away with that person had the sound of their own soul on that tape Amazing. that's something to me that's something precious and to me. If someone can play an instrument, to me, it's an extension of the soul. Is uh -huh. that and is how that music can touch other people as well? Um, well, it's another tool, it's, it's, isn't it? Or, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's like some use coloured ribbing ribbons or flower readings, yeah. all that kind of thing. It's what hits home yeah. with you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing yeah. story. I've never thought yeah. of doing that. I mean, okay, we record messages. <laughs> You know, and yeah. you know, having the having the verbal to, chat, but I've never thought of actually like, playing music to be able to to link in yeah. and um, 
to we've resonate done, it so well, linking it to the message, is, it, it's amazing. Yeah, we've done quite a, a bit like that within the uh, development circles. So say um, when they're when they're going to do a one-to-one -one reading, for instance, and they were given readings, and we would ask them to play a little bit of music and see what stimulated them within that music. Uh, yeah. And they just start giving a reading, then they'll get them to stop there and then I'd play something else and see how that would stimulate and see how it would change and move them in different ways and see what change it has within the reading and how it's moved them into certain places within the reading and even uh -huh. certain songs, I mean certain words that would stick out to them, they were able to use and, and, and use the meaning of those words and things like that as well. It's, it's, to yeah. me it's something so special with music. That's yeah. brilliant. I, I mean, God knows nobody wants to hear me play an instrument. I'm toned down. But <laughs> when it comes when it comes to songs, and um, I mean, give me a. Uh, I'm. I've said I'm a rock and roll girl. I like a bit of country music. Um, I never thought I would like some classical music, but it's getting to the point. That, yes, I do like some classical music. And as you say, huh. it's the tone, it's the rhythm, it's the beat. Give me a good old, um, you know, a beat the drums. Uh, yeah. jungle rock type song, no problem, I can tune in straight away, you know. Um, yeah. But with other ones that come through, um, and, and again, it's a, it may not link with me, but it links with the sitter. Um, and uh -huh. then I've had to go back and listen to the song and think, well, now I know why it links with the sitter, you know, because it's not something yeah, yeah, that yeah. I would normally listen to. But once you do, uh -huh. you get that resonation, you get the, the, the rhythm and the, the, the vibration in. And you get the feeling yeah. as to why it linked in. I mean, there's one, um, uh, an old hymn that is one of our family's tunes, um, Old Rugged Cross. Uh, um, yeah, and that brings, oh, through my, that brings through my granddad. And then oh, with at the nice. same thing, it's um, the Irish song, Danny Boy. <laughs> see the link? Yeah, yeah. see the link. Every event our family used to go to or plan or whatever, if we turned up at a pub on a night out or if we were having a <laughs> wedding or a f even the fun you know the funeral, yeah. anything, wherever we were, for some reason, Danny Boy would be played. Would be played. If it wasn't Danny oh, Boy and Grandad, it was Old Rugged Cross, you know. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing how music and even things like your snowboarding, even things like um, the hobbies that you do, um, yeah, you know it fascinates me when spirit come through and they start talking about baseball. I know nothing about baseball, but to the sitter, it's their favourite game, or it's you know the one that they watch but they can't play. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say there. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm oh, yeah. Watch. No, that's all right. Um, uh, when we talk about music, and music very much even comes through within the readings or certain songs that come through. Oh. And there could be words within that songs within my mind um, that help stimulate something there. But quite a lot, of, you, you, as you say, you get you get like songs that might have been the song that the, that was played at their funeral or something like that. Yeah. You know, it comes across as evidence. You know, they're, they're, yeah. yeah, music so to me is something it's amazing. How, uh, and it's learning to interpret. I mean, I have what we call keys to communication, the ones that are so familiar, you know, like the ones yeah, yeah. that you know and the images and the symbols and all that. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. When it comes to the, and especially when you're in an audience and you've got so many energies in one room, there's no way you can link in and your specific keys or your specific meanings can fit everybody. And you get all these things, you know, the, I love the ones, you know, the pink wellies that come through or the fluffy sippers, you know, um, uh -huh. the ones... Um, the obvious ones like the little fire engine truck that was the kids favorite things like that you know but you'll get the obscure uh -huh. ones you get the really obscure ones and they're the ones that pinpoint to me that there's absolutely no way anybody could have planned that put it in there and hope to <laughs> that somebody would take yeah. pick it up you know yeah there was one really spell when i was talking about my friend lane loban um, it's how he took a shine to me a while ago. We were on a, on a course with Glenn Edwards in my early development and um, uh, Glenn got me up to work and as I said I knew I have a lady here, I know that is, uh, um, I knew I've got a lady here and I knew um, whoever I'm with, they've got a photo of her on the mantelpiece and I've not got the pink rose that's sitting next, in the man uh, next to the photo on the mantelpiece and, uh -huh. like that. and Len, Len put his hand up and says yes I can take that. Uh, there's a couple other things, there's a purple and yellow flower that's out in the back garden as well and, and I found out later that was planted in her memory. Um, yeah. And there was, there was um, 
there was something else. And, I, and I, that was it. And I says, today's a special day. She keeps telling me today is a special day. And then he's like, nah, I can't take it. I don't understand that. And to me, obviously, in my early development at the time, I, I thought, okay, I'm just wrong. And uh-huh. then um, and then we go away for the break and he comes back and then he, he put up his hand to, to ask Glenn if he can speak. And he says, just to tell you um, that it was, uh, that Stevie was correct. It was 50 years to the day is when um, at uh, I think it was 7 o'clock or was it 8 o'clock, I can't remember. I think it was 7 o'clock. Um, that we got together and, and, and at the ball and whatnot. Wow. So um, that, that that was that was fine. And then um, I, I gave him a lift home because um, he he was interested. He showed showed me like the the, the rose and the and on the mantelpiece and the the flower out in the back garden and and stuff like that as well. And that was fine. Um, so I was I, I was. Um, I went down to the beach. I stayed in a camper van for that weekend. It was quite luxurious, actually. <laughs> but I stayed in the camper van that weekend next to the sea. I couldn't ask for anything better. And um, but I just had the feeling there. I went to. I, I phoned them up uh, about quarter to seven or something like that, and I just wished them a happy anniversary. Oh, and bless. something something in my mind said something in my mind said watch the TV. But to me, doubting it, I didn't. I didn't tell them. Uh, but but I just says happy anniversary. Then the next day we went back on the course and he stopped stopped the class again, put his hand up and stopped the class again. He says, I've just got to say something here because it wasn't until my wife was passing or when she was just about to go to the spirit world, um, it was it was her birthday and what she asked for was a, a record and it was the Barry Manilow, I Can't Smile Without You, is that song and she says to him then uh, that you know I'm going to the spirit world soon and he was trying to, he says, no, no, no. And she says, like, no, I, I, you know, Len, I'm going to go soon. Uh, but whenever you hear the song, I'm going to be right beside you. And I'll be, uh-huh. and, I'll, and I'll be there just beside you. And I, you know, you'll know that I love you. And then um, he told that story. Um, and then uh, he says, just bang on, I think it was seven o'clock. He's raising his glass. The TV was on. He was just about to raise his glass, and he was saying, "Here's to Anna. Here's to all the um, the great memories that we've had, and all the good times to come in the future." And as he raised his glass, on the TV came Barry Manilow. I can't smile without you. Bang on seven o'clock. Bang on that wow. time of when when he said that that he, he got together were there. But that's just when you were just talking about how can you plan something like that. Uh-huh. It's just. Oh, well, that just goes to show it is. It's that synchronicity. It's those points uh-huh. in your day, whereby you just cannot deny the messages are coming from spirit. It's nothing to do to do with the phone ring. It's nothing to do with what you've got <laughs> planned. You know, I mean, um, go no farther than Jen that I was talking about earlier on. Three times uh-huh. in this past week, her names come to me, and three times it's focused. And I'm thinking, okay, why is why is she there? You know. Um, and yesterday was a big day for me, which is going to bring out a surprise later on. But um, and it was it was Jen's birthday. Oh my God! And I didn't get reminded Jesus. until fifteen minutes after the midnight last night that the whole <laughs> thing and all that had built up to remembering my best mate in New Zealand, my first oh. ever mate in New Zealand. And I'm thinking, uh, this is just plan. This is. I can't argue it. Everything that we've gone through, over, we've had some. I can't say much more about it, but we've had some really great news over the last four or five days. And over those four or five days, Jen's names keep getting mentioned, and it was her day uh-huh. yesterday. Um, so yeah, it was just. It's part of life. It's those things that you pick up on that, that remind you of yeah. loved ones that we go through yeah. every day, um, and Definitely. even getting our own guidance and direction. When we uh-huh, feel lost, uh-huh. if we put the question out there, you don't need to be a medium to communicate. You know, you can just put the question out yeah. there. If you want to pray yeah. to a God, if you want to pray to angels, if you exactly. want to ask your granny for the advice she would give you in life, it's spiritualism is all about seeing those synchronicities and those directions in life that we yeah. get every single day, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I think the more as you, you mentioned God, um, to me, well, I, I know that God's within the soul of everyone. God's with you, you know, God's within everyone. And I think sometimes when we um, don't recognise it, I think it's because we become kind of like disconnected from our soul oh. to some way. Yeah. Uh, we go through a difficult time or something, or 
Um, I think the more in touch we become within our own soul, the more uh, God will be part of your life, and the more you'll recognise these signs, and it'll more it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll become part. Of, yeah, it'll, it'll yeah, fall it's into a shame place. people try and separate that God is exterior, that it's um, some supreme being that is uh, that we have to achieve to attain, um, rather than accepting that it's part of us, that we are God, that we're. God is within us. If we're made in His image, then we are part of. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's one of the posts that I saw first thing this morning online was um, uh, one of these pretty pictures, you know, that get posted with little words or painted all over it. And the uh -huh. gist of it was that um, that they wish they could we wake each morning and hear the news that there was peace in the world. Now, uh -huh. my whole my whole first reaction was. Well, I wake up every morning thinking there is peace in my world. There will be peace elsewhere. And if we yeah. put that projection out there, rather than focusing on the negative, um, uh -huh. maybe that we can help change things, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a, it's a, I know it's, it's a big effort. But it's like waking up on the wrong side of the bed. If you wake up miserable, you're going to have a miserable day. Yeah. If you change your thoughts, your actions and your deeds, then maybe you can put that positive outlook and that positive out, um, yeah. change to the things. And that's all what mediumship is about. It's not yeah. all airy-fairy, lovey-dovey messages, but it is about getting the message exactly. out there that we're here. You know? And it's fact as well. It's not just, yeah. it's not just a belief or a faith. It's fact. It's a science yeah. as well. And exactly. You were talking I mean, about... Um, uh, it might be just a little bit, but a little bit makes a lot in my eyes. If you think of it, like of all the churches uh, all around, all around, the, all around the world, or even people, it's like with the, if you think of the physical body being your own church, in a mm -hmm. sense, if you light one candle within a room, it'll light up the room to a certain degree. But if you light up another candle, it'll light it up even more. Uh -huh. And if you think of all these other little churches, all these churches spread around the world. And just people that have got a, a spiritual knowing within themselves, or, or even a belief or a faith, in yeah. their own way, they're 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 lightening up. They're they might not even recognise it. They're lightening up the world and lightening lightening up other people's worlds around them. as it like the ripple effect on a pond? As you're that talking is about. a lovely. Uh, that is a lovely image, isn't it? Can you imagine yeah. if we lit up the world with a candle for every house? It would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I've got to say, we've come to the top of the hour, Stephen. I know you uh -huh. had uh, limited time today. I've got to say a big thank you for joining us. Um, we have extended you the invitation to come and join us at spiritualsonline.com. Join us in the chat room. Yeah. I hope you'll take that up in the new year when you've got some time. You're not flitting off to France. <laughs> <laughs> and all these holidays. I'll be coming home. Working as a snowboarding instructing instructor medium. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope we'll I mean we've got other shows we'd, we'd love to talk to you again there's never enough time oh, to talk to you it's such a privilege it's been so nice so nice seeing, um, meeting you excellent again. yeah finally <laughs> to get in touch it's took us ages <laughs> I, I looked at our first message and it must have been something way back in like 2013 you know yeah, um, yes. <laughs> so it's great to finally get in touch with you everybody's saying that thank you in the chat room um, oh, Tickle from, you. we've thank got Jody, we've got yeah. Tracy we've had Eric in there um, all our listeners, I didn't even get to do any of the promotions or the, the thank yous today, <laughs> to all our listeners on tunein.com um, and to everybody in the chat room, all those on Spiritualist Online listening to the radio um, I've got to say a big thank you to you all, we hope to have Stephen with us again in the future um, and in the new year, and I've got to say a season's greetings to you all the best. Thanks. I'm um, used to. And all the best for New Year. Um, and we'll rope you in again very shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. Okie dokie. Time has caught up with us again, folks. I do wish, you know, this never enough hours in the day. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things. Check us all out at spiritualistonline.com. There's chat rooms there, there's classes there, there's courses, there's open circles, there's healing sessions, there's everything you could want um, and more to come. Um, of course, Spiritualist Online is also on Facebook, so is Sock Radio, just search Sock Radio and you can find out about all the shows that we promote and all the classes and courses at spiritualistonline.com. We will see you again next week, sorry, next fortnight for another Spirit 
Talks with Julie. But of course, throughout the week, there are more shows on Sock Radio. I'm going to say a major big thank you once again for joining me to Mr. Stephen Trolland. And we will see you in a fortnight. Take care and all the best for Christmas and New Year. See you later.